Dr. Y.G. Solanki, sir. So, as all of us, we know that uh, proctology is the medical specialty that focuses on diseases of colon, rectum, and anus. And common conditions that may be treated by the proctologist include fissure, piles, fistula, Crohn's diseases, or polyps, etc. So, uh, it is the diagnosis, study, and treatment of the diseases related to the rectum, anorectal, and anus area. So this is the specialty branch of our Shalya Tantra. And we are here to uh, hear the insights by these eminent speakers. And our chief guest for today's uh, Shalya Sambhasha is uh, Honorable Respected uh, Professor Dr. P.K. Prajapati, sir, who is Honorable Vice Chancellor uh, from Jodhpur Ayurveda University. So, uh, without wasting much more time, I will request Dr. Rashmi to proceed for uh, Dhanvantari Stavan uh, as a tribute to Lord Dhanvantari. Paya Prutyu Nashanam Dhataramisham Vividha Ushadinam Ramrutaghatam Taru Dorbesha Turbi Sukhma Swachati Rutya Kapari Vilasan Mauli Mambho Janetram Kalam Bho Dojvalankam Katitata Vilasan Charu Pita Paratyam Vande Tanvantarintam Nikhila Gadavan Praudhadavagni Lilam Praudhadavagni Lilam Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Rashmi. Now, I would like to request Professor Dr. Amar Dvivedi, sir, to please welcome uh, all the guests present over here uh, in one minute. Please, sir. Om Dhanvantara now. Thank you, Dr. Pradnaya. First of all, a very good evening and uh, my heartfelt uh, regards to all the national executive members of uh, Vishwa Ayurved Parishad, all the office bearers of my own uh, Shalya Sambhasa Prakosht and all the participants, I mean our own Shalya Tantra practitioners and faculty who have joined this online uh, guest lecture today. I welcome our today's chief guest, Honorable Professor Prajapati ji, who is Vice Chancellor of Jodhpur University. I am grateful to you, sir, uh, for accepting our invitation uh, uh, to grace uh, today's session. I also welcome our today's guest speaker, uh, respected Professor Dr. Y.G. Solanki, sir, for uh, you know accepting our invitation to deliver uh, his talk in this Shalya Sambhasa. Uh, sir, I would like to brief, uh, uh, I mean, I will take this opportunity to brief the activities of uh, Vishwa Ayurved Parishad. Uh, this uh, Vishwa Ayurved Parishad is basically an NGO, uh, which is formed around uh, 26 years back uh, with the divine aim of re-establishing the knowledge of Ayurved among the common people. The main objective of Vishwa Ayurved Parishad is, you know, to organize Ayurveda teachers, students, and all the stakeholders, uh, such as the farmers, the manufacturers, etc., and bring them to a common platform to develop the sense of self-respect and devotion for scientific approach about Ayurveda. Further, our uh, national executive members like uh, Professor Mahesh Vyasji, Dr. Gobind Shuklaji, Dr. Yogendra Mishraji, Dr. Surendra Chaudhary ji, 
डॉक्टर के के द्विवेदी जी डॉक्टर अनिल शुक्ला जी एंड ऑल अदर एग्जीक्यूटिव मेंबर्स दे हैव डिसाइडेड रिसेंटली टू यू नो एक्सटेंड दी विश्व आयुर्वेद परिषद एज पर दी स्पेशलिटी आई मीन दिस सब्जेक्ट वाइज दे हैव दे हैव फॉर्म दी सेपरेट प्रकोष्ठ और फोरम्स सच एज shall uh, vishwa ayurved parishad kai chikitsa forum is there this our own shalya tantra prakoshth is there along with this subject wise prakoshth they have also started with anushandhan prakoshth vishwa ayurved parishad shikshak prakoshth vidyarthri prakoshth and all so overall around 18 separate uh, forums are there under the umbrella of vishwa ayurved parishad and this is you know, have more scientific and systemic Uh, development of these specialty branches and to get uh, together more more of these specialized uh, ayurveda fraternity as per their interest of subject so this is how this shalya tantra prakosh was formed uh, around 4 month back and i'm very fortunate that uh, i have been given this responsibility to uh, be the convener of uh, Uh, rashtriya convener of this uh, shalya tantra prakosh so in this series today is the third guest lecture of vishwa ayurved Pad parishad shalya tantra sambhasha and i am uh, pretty sure that uh, this lecture today's lecture on uh, clinical practice experiences in proctology this topic is a very uh, you know uh, Uh, a topic which is uh, the uh, uh, highlight of shalya tantra and i am sure that all the participants who are attending this uh, uh, online uh, guest lecture will be benefited and their knowledge will be upgraded after the session and i wish all the best and thank you sir and thank you dr bhise you can continue thank you sir Uh, i am dr pradnya <laughs> okay uh, uh sir uh, i would like to request now uh, to dr pankaj barman sir uh, to uh, welcome and to introduce our today's chief guest uh, respected dr prajapati sir uh, pankaj barman sir ha uh, yes 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 i am hello yeah uh, good evening uh, today i am very much fortunate to welcome professor uh, pk prajapati uh, professor prajapati is the vice chancellor of dr sarvapalli radhakrishnan rajasthan ayurved university uh, and uh, more than this he have an uh, unique uh, identity as for him because he is our senior in banaras hindi university uh, we call him boss he was an rda president he was a leader of our association and he lead uh, many thing for ayurveda then from banaras he join national institute of ayurveda jaipur then he join uh, jamnagar university then he again join all india institute of ayurveda जो हम लोग का गुरु जी है ये सारो धाम का यात्रा कर लिए है आयुर्वेद में जो सारो धाम है उसमें यात्रा किए है एक्सेलेंट एडमिनिस्ट्रेटिव एक्सपीरियंस इंचार्ज डायरेक्टर इंचार्ज आई एम पी सी एल ड्यूरिंग हिज लीडरशिप आई एम पी सी एल एक्चुअली ग्रो दे बिकॉज बिफोर दैट वेन दिस फ्यू पीपुल्स वी ऑर्डर मेडिसिन फ्रॉम आई एम पी सी एल इट टेक्स मोर टाइम थ्री फोर मंथस But uh, when Professor Prajapati became the in charge, all over India uh, the medicine became easily available. So he is an excellent personality uh, in uh, as a academician as well as a very good administrator. So I am very fortunate to welcome him on behalf of Bishar Bedi Ayurved Parishad Shalya Prakash uh, to today's this uh, webinar uh, as a chief guest. Thank you. thank you uh, dr pankaj sir for the nice words uh, for our chief guest and now i will request dr rashmi to introduce our today's uh, guest speaker uh, professor dr yg solanki sir namaste everyone uh, i am very fortunate to introduce my teacher uh, uh, on behalf of uh, shalya sambhasha prakoshtha uh, dr yudhus uh, g solanki 
uh, sir is uh, graduated as well as post graduated from R A Pudar Medical College from the batch. Uh, uh, sir has overall experience of thirty two years in U G teaching as well as twenty two years of P G teaching. Presently, sir is working as a professor at uh, Shalya Tantra Department, R A Pudar Medical College. Sir has been a uh, work as an examiner for several UG and PG in various universities. Sir as a uh, sir is university recognized PhD guide as well as principal investigator in various clinical research in Ayurvedic formulations. Sir uh, has been a, uh, become a director of a one month certificate course in Shara Sutra for all Ayurveda graduates in uh, at Arey Podar Medical College, Varadi, Mumbai. Sir also worked as a resource person and a guest speaker at. At various ROTPs, national conferences, and seminars, sir has of international exposure too. Sir also worked as a guest speaker at London International Conference, master trainer for Ayurveda at Singapore. He was also invited as a guest speaker in CRO International Conference at Egypt. Sir was a faculty at fellowship course at British Ayurveda Academy of London. Sir also invited by government of Nepal as a master trainer for a two week Agni Karma workshop. Sir awarded with several awards such as Vaidya Nana Joshi Memorial Gold Medal Award from Bombay University and first prize of research paper at a national conference at Kolkata organized by CCRS in two thousand seven. I welcome you, sir, on behalf of Sarla Sambhasha Prakoshtha. Over to you, Pradna. Thank you, Dr. Rashmi. Now I would like to request our today's respected. guest speaker professor dr yg solanki sir he is also my guru and mentor so with due respect i would like to request you sir to please proceed sir you are mute please unmute share screen Uh, good evening uh, everyone and, evening, and thank sir. you very much uh, dr pradnya and dr rashmi uh, for warm welcome and an introduction uh, uh, for this uh, presentation it's a honor to be a speaker at such a august platform of vishwa ayurved parishad and shalya prakash uh, thank you very much for inviting me uh, to share my views Uh, on this topic, and uh, again, it's an honor to be speaking uh, where uh, Professor Dr. P. K. Prajapati, who is an honorable Vice Chancellor of Gujarat, uh, sir, Jodhpur Ayurved University, Rajasthan, um, sir, thank you very much uh, to be present even while traveling uh, and uh, giving an audience uh, for my presentation, and uh, my dear colleague. Uh, professor dr amar prakash divedi uh, for inviting me uh, for this uh, presentation uh, my my screen sharing and screen is visible now yes sir thank you very much uh, the topic of my presentation today is my clinical experience in proctology uh, when i was i was I, i was asked to talk on this topic uh, mm -hmm. i was thinking that the my clinical experience journey from where to start so actually the journey starts at uh, uh, the time when i graduated uh, from arepodar ayurveda institute in mumbai in 1985 uh, i graduated and joined the institute working as an intern Darling. and uh, i request all the participants to mute themselves so that uh, we do not get much disturbed dr pradeep that is a rayotu cotton no Excellent. Uh, I request host or co-host to mute uh, all the participants, please. Yeah. So my journey uh, in the practice of proctology started when I became intern, and uh, as you know, you know, struggling interns they try to get the knowledge and learn in the institute and outside also. And uh, during the internship, I was uh, not only working in uh, R. A. Podar Medical College and M. A. Podar Hospital. but uh, i was working and helping two other surgeons as well and later on i joined the residency program in my hospital worked 6 months as a junior resident and then i became senior resident also but when i became senior resident 
the real awareness dawn on me that i have to be responsible for much of the clinical work because my unit in charge and my boss decision depended on my feedback about the patients and everything and suddenly i realized that i am a responsible person in this hospital setup and while doing this and particularly paying attention towards the practice of proctology i realized that har sutra has got much potency in treating the fistula in anu this disease then i learned later on that shar sutra is used in other conditions as well but then that was a period otherwise in internship i was much attracted towards the modern surgery and paying attention to that only the reason behind uh, 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 paying attention towards proctology is the fantastic and wonderful result of the shar sutra in fistula in anu but in that time that is 1980s early 80s and late 80s the proctology was a part of general surgery there was no specialization in proctology and there were hardly a few proctologists who were practicing pure proctology and ayurvedic proctologists were still fewer in at that time the reason behind this was there was actually not much encouragement the youngsters like me was getting for uh, practicing in proctology and another thing was that time con consider 35 40 years back period the occurrence of anorectal diseases was not as high as it is today that is another reason another thing is now we are i consider using disposable material for clinical practice is luxury now but in my days hardly uh, no such rubber gloves or were available i worked in government institute so disposable material was not abundantly available and not easily available it was considered to be luxury even i'll tell you i think if you are you might be knowing that the servant used to cut the fingers of the gloves and we used to get only one finger of the gloves wrapped around our index finger wrap it with gauze piece and do the per rectal digital examination so it 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 used to be considered a little bit of a dirty practice and that's why the proctology practice was not that encouraged and as i said when i was learning uh, outside my institute and i worked with several of the allopathy or modern surgeons as well and they were having because of the busy practice also and a, a little bit of lazy attitude hardly they used to defer examination whereas in my institute at polar medical college my boss and my guru he was very meticulous for examining the patient and doing the diagnosis pre operatively but there were two three surgeons with whom i worked they never they just used to get a complaint prescribe the medicine if patient is still complaining directly admit him and examination diagnosis everything on the directly operation table table and in operation table because of the poor preparation etc sometimes patient used to defecate on the table operative table so it used to be considered very dirty practice and that's why they to despise of such kind of uh, practice and there were no strand, uh, standard operative protocols established during those days and another thing is it the economy involved in the practice of the proctology was not that good and high the way it is today so because of these things the proctology practice was not developing and proctology was not catching up with youngsters and uh, like me so the diagnosis even uh, internal and external hemorrhage we we read into the book the which hemorrhage you call external which hemorrhage internal but during residency simple mantra the skin covered hemorrhages are external skin covered if the mucosa is protruding out it is internal but here skin is also there so this is external internal and here purely mucosal hemorrhoidal complex is coming out so this is internal little of study which we studied in final year of exam in appearing that there are a uh, column of morgani which jony morgani from italy and john hilton from america these two gentlemen at the end of 18th century said so it came into book that these are the columns of morgani and which forms the hilton line we read into the book but it did not dawn on us till we started practicing the proctology that's why it made difficult that which hemorrhage we should call internal and which hemorrhage we should call external and that's why the examination became very important even even the fissure 
we know now which which part of the fissure even this may tear on the anodum we used to label it as a fissure but now we understand that the complete tear on the mucosal part where the internal sphincter is also exposed we should call it as a tear. this is proctitis along with the tear on the procto uh, anodum but this is genuine fissure where there is a genuine anal spasm sphincter spasm which is painful we should call it as a uh, fissure in anu but that was a confusion during my uh, early days of uh, proctology practice and that's why the importance of rachana sharir given in ayurveda it started slowly as i became senior and especially when i became a faculty and a junior lecturer then i started teaching and believe me friends teaching is best way of learning so when i started teaching the students i started learning also and then it dawned on me that sushut samhita gives a very beautiful concept of three valai pravahini visarjini and samvarini it it has got a anatomical importance with functional and prognostic value now we know that anal carcinoma rectal carcinoma and why why the deeper carcinoma which is into the internal valai of uh, anal region that rectal carcinoma has got a poor prognosis compared to anal carcinoma and that's why in those days the the the, the realization dawned on me the importance of internal sphincter and uh, external sphincter during those days harming the sphincter was never dreamed of even and it was feared badly because of the incontinence because sphincter repair and pds suture was not there in in in, in that time now it's a different time now we cut the sphincter while treating the fissure which we call now sphincterotomy but that time i will in my uh, further slide i'll show you the lord's anal dilatation was the standard treatment for treatment of the fissure under anesthesia under either spinal anesthesia or general anesthesia we used to do lord's anal sphincter dilatation with three finger four finger dilatation of course we know now that there was no standardization of anal dilatation <laughs> and we yeah. never used to consider okay. that there might be some damage to the sphincter but touch wood we we had two two days <laughs> of <laughs> operation theater in a week uh, wednesday and friday and in one ot at least three to five fissure patient used to be there so considering that four to eight anal dilatation per week considering a monthly of 30 then consider 20 years we did but no patient came back with incontinence either fecal incontinence and continuous or gaseous incontinence so was so measured and that's why in the early year when sphincterotomy started being practiced in the treatment of fissure we used to wonder ke lord anal dilatation kyon nahi yaar itne saalon se to kar rahe hain aur abhi tak to incontinence ka patient aaya nahi hai but then slowly importance of partial sphincterotomy or lateral sphincterotomy dawned on us and we started uh, being practiced but this question came in mind ke what if we do anal dilatation without anesthesia then anesthetist said patient may die of vessel vagal vessel vagal shock so we understood the concept of marma and why the good prant is considered sadhyo pran har marma and it can kill a patient if you do the anal dilatation without anesthesia or even you must seek a node from the anesthetist while doing anal dilatation or sphincterotomy that when anesthetist says go ahead then only you do the procedure otherwise you may lose the patient or patient may go in vesovagal shock and there there lies the importance of marma concept of why sushrut has given this concept and the sushrut has given the concept of the uh, uh, yantra also i will be talking later on so fissure management in those days was a standard treatment of lord's dilatation now it has become lateral internal internal sphincterotomy it is being done either open sphincterotomy that you take a incision on the anoderm area a very tiny incision where you can insert the curved artery forcep only inside take out the few fibers or much of the fibers of internal sphincter and you can uh, severe it with knife or with a cautery that is now being commonly performed more experts they are doing closed sphincterotomy that directly the the the, the knife is inserted 
एट एनोडम लेवल ऑन द इंटरनल स्पिंटर पल्पेटेड नहीं तो ठीक है हेलो नहीं नहीं तो ठीक है करो फोन में खराब है और दिस स्पिंटर टॉप ये खराब हो गया बाय लेजर नाउ ठीक है बोल और है कोई अल्टरनेटिव विद बोटॉक्स इंजेक्शन आल्सो द स्पिंटर स्पाज्म इज रिड्यूस्ड बट दैट इज द प्रोग्रेस आई हैव सीन with my eyes that only <laughs> lot dilatation <laughs> was performed with much very good success now the sphincterotomy is being done with no um, incontinence results if done perfectly and uh, a sphincterotomy is also being done so this was the journey in fissure management but the ayurvedic procedures are also popular now in my opd patient they come and when we tell them ki tumko sandas kiye gaye ki chhota zakham ho gaya hai aur ek operation karna padega then they say ki ayurvedic dawai se karke dekhiye because मात्रा बस्ती एंड गुड पुरन विथ आइदर प्लेन तेल तेल सीजमे ऑयल और कंडीशन लाइक सिद्ध तेल या जत्यादि तेल और यष्टि मधु सिद्ध तेल यू गिव थर्टी टू फिफ्टी सी सी ऑफ ल्यूक वॉर्म ऑयल पुश इन टू द एनर्स विद द कैथेटर एंड इट गिव एक्सेलेंट रिजल्ट अलॉन्ग विथ अदर ट्रीटमेंट लाइक सीड्स बाथ परगेटिव एक्सेट्रा सो आयुर्वेदिक प्रोसीजर्स आर इक्वली पॉपुलर but i am of that generation who has seen the journey of treatment of the anal uh, fissure or fissure in anu with these type of dilatations another progress with instrumentation and table i have seen i think dr amar prakash dwedi and dr rashmi dr pradnya who are graduated from podar dr pradnya is still working in, as a uh, assistant professor in podar they will recognize that this is a old table which was used in uh, our operation theater and here you can see these the only poles raised and it was very uncomfortable pressing these poles here so the 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 proctologist or proctology examination table or operation table has also over the year undergone the transformation and such very ultra modern hydraulic pressure tables are in existence having providing a very good cushion to calf muscle and where you can abduct the thigh uh, of both uh, both the thigh of the patient and he has got the comfortable uh, this thing now uh, uh, this table which i am showing you it is not available in our institute but this table is very comfortable it is like a chair i can i can i, I have i i will be showing you a video of this table so just have a look that how the uh, even the table humble table has undergone the transformation with technological developments that how e easy in the even in opd it becomes to give a lithotomy position otherwise giving a lithotomy position to the patient becomes very awkward you know you have to make them understand yahan so jao pair iske upar rakho pair aisa khichenge and you cannot keep the patient for more time in lithotomy position but look at this a very comfortable uh, lithotomy position is given to the patient and once your examination is over into the opd just push a simple button and the table takes the patient back to a position where patient feels like he is sitting in a chair so his buttock are supported his neck is resting well and without any jerky movement the table comes back to its own position this table can be used even in operation theater also and comfortably in opd also we can give these positions of course you have to ask in this demonstration patient is wearing cloth but you can ask the patient to remove the cloth below the umbilicus level and here he can come out smilingly without much discomfort and without much straining on the knee joint and hip joint also when giving ab abduction of course this is a very expensive table being used but this humble table has undergone the transformation from this old age table where only the iron rods with a one uh, um, uh, a cotton uh, a huge thread dori used to tie the legs and give the abduction at hip joint and at knee joint and give the patient lithotomy position of course you cannot keep the patient longer time without anesthesia in this position but this table has undergone over the three decades uh, transformation and i expect over one or two decades much more progress will happen for this uh, this thing look at the proctoscope this is again our humble old proctoscope metal proctoscope it has undergone much of the technological innovations and transformations but the basic concept of proctoscopy remains which sushrut has described as a arshodarshan yantra here you can see a, a transparent 
proctoscope. These transparent proctoscopes are also available, disposable, a single use proctoscope you can do. And as I said earlier, we are aware that Sushrut, several thousand years back, he described Arsho Darshan Yantra, which is a modified form present day proctoscope. It is, he described it as a Nari Yantra open at both the ends and he clear cut in Sanskrit described the shape, its cow order shape, Gai ke Achal Jaisa, four finger length, it's a Ek Chidra and Dvi Chidra. It has undergone a lot of modification of Sushrut times where the self illuminating proctoscope is also available. There is a light source available. It gives a very beautiful illumination and you can use variety of shape and size proctoscope. So humble proctoscope, I witnessed in my journey of proctology practice of three to four decades, going transformation, taking the help of technological development and it making a, a proctology practice very easy. This is Dr. Chiute's proctoscope. Uh, Dr. Chiute, a very respectable, honored figure in Mumbai and over the India, he designed his own proctoscope because this is a much longer proctoscope than what I had shown. It's four centimeter, 14 centimeter, sorry, 14 centimeter long proctoscope. It, it proctoscope goes up to the sacral promontory and this proctoscope is very useful for treating surgically the prolapse of rectum by rectopexy. So this is designed by Dr. Chute himself. Uh, <laughs> Secondary uh, allopathy <coughs> surgeon and practicing proctologist. Uh, he recently <coughs> passed away because of the cardiac element. And this is a photograph of Dr. Chute with our Ayurveda Proctology Association members. And we, we miss Chute, sir, a legendary surgeon from Thane. Dr. Amar might be remembering him. So, uh, as I said earlier, the proctoscope have transformed and different, different people they have invented. Uh, proctoscope. Even now, the video proctoscope is available where you can shoot the proctoscopy and take it on the laptop and show the patient of their own interior of rectum and anal region. And you can record and give it into the brain drive to the patient before operation and after operation, the scenario. So the humble proctoscope has also undergone several changes. And these are the instruments, you know, variety of probes. Probe, our Ayurveda doctors are making the probe in various malleable probes, cotton probes, and uh, the modern technology also. Even the retractors, anal retractors, self-retaining retractors. The simple retractor I we used to use in my residency until today also, that is sim speculum, or right angle procto um, uh, retractor we are using. But now, beautiful uh, self-retaining retractors are in the market. A very easy to handle and user-friendly uh, retractors are available like this, which make the anodum space completely stretchable and usable. So when in completing two decades, when 2000 completed and 2001, 2002, I was really attracted and loving the branch of procto proctology because it was an easy practice. Only few diseases are there in proctology. And in this 20 years, when 2000, 2001, 2002 came, the incidence <coughs> of anorectal diseases jumped because of this modern life and changing food habits, stressful situation, etc., etc. The incidence increased manifold. And I started thinking of writing a book about the, this progress of the proctology. But then suddenly I came online across this book, Romance of Proctology. The name of the book is Romance of Proctology and it was written in 1948 by American Ohio, Charles Elton Blanchard. He, he wrote this book and in that book, I came across a word that is proctus. It's a Greek word for anus. This was coined in 1896. So already there was a book in existence, which I was thinking that I'm, 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 I'm so much uh, now in favor of proctology practice. And when in 2000, students who completed post-graduation from Podar, they started practicing only proctology and they got trained from the legendary Ayurveda surgeons also. I'll come across in my slideshow further and I'll, I'll, I'll give the few names also. Let us see. So when, when I started studying proctology with much interest, then I realized that till 2001, there was no consensus on the definition of the constipation. A constipation kisko bolenge. So in 2001 to 2006, 
modern practicing pediatricians they designed a criteria which was later on recognized as a rome 1 and rome 2 criteria for pediatric patient defining their constipation and so proctologists sit back and they thought that why this is for pediatric why not for adult so they came together and they established rome 3 criteria in 2000 uh, 2006 and where they defined the functional constipation and this is a much famous Bristol stool chart where they, they describe few criteria. I will be explaining in further. But here the shape of the stool they described to define the constipation. So it was unanimously established in 2006 that Rome 3 criteria says less than 3 stools in a week, hard and dry stool for around 12 weeks and difficult to eliminate and sometimes the patient has to do digital maneuvering where patient inserts the finger to remove the hard stool, so difficult to eliminate, and he has to strain, and sometimes this straining becomes painful, and even by doing this, the patient does not get the satisfaction of passing the stool completely. So, sensation of fullness, incomplete ev evacuation, and dissatisfaction, these were the criteria. If patient has got more than four or five of these criteria, then they said, that patient should be labeled as a constipated. So, friends, let us see what Ayurveda says about that. In Charak Samhita, it few thousand years back, you know, they said, Krishrain, that is with much difficulty, Alpam, and Alpa Alpam means the frequency is also less and the quantity of the stool is also less. Sashabda Shulam, it is because of the gaseous distension that the while de uh, defecating, the patient has got a noisy passage of the stool or noisy, noisy defecation. Shulam, Atikrthitam, Atibahuhu, Dushtva Purushvahini means the patient's Purushvahini shrotas, that is the elementary tract, is light. And Ashtangradha clear cut says, Sharir Chinta Nirvartam, that when you get up early in the morning, you must pass the stool daily. That is frequency of the stool, that one has to pass the stool daily. That was the definition. The Sushrut, he, he gave another beautiful description that Saushrastam Abhi Abhi Doshestu Nastu Apsu Ausidati. Up, up means water. Apsu Ausidati means the stool which sinks into the water, which does not float onto the water. Brish Durgandhim. Otherwise also stool smells badly, but this stool where the patient is constipated, it smells very badly. Brush Durgandhim, Vichinnam, that it is not solid, good form. Cha Aam Saudhnyakam, the another concept Ayurveda has given to this world is the concept of Aam. It's another topic, it needs another 40 or 50 minutes presentation to explain Aam, but Ayurveda doctors will understand. So, Etani to Lingani, that means above described. Uh, stool is there, patient is constipated. Vipiritani to Yasetu means, Vipiritani means opposite of this, where the, the stool floats onto the water. Stool does not smell much and not vichinam, that is well formed stool is, patient is not constipated. Very important is Laghavam Cha means patient feels very light hearted and very light into the abdomen and he derives the satisfaction of passing up the stool, which my one of my friend labeled as a shauchanand that is the pleasure of defecating completely another thing attracted me is you can see this modern day laxatives and purgatives classified as stimulant laxatives uh, commonest example is dalcolex tablet and stimulant suppositories of dalcolex there are stool softeners available osmotic regulators like which draw more water into the intestine and makes the bowel smooth and the stool also smooth. Then there are bulk forming uh, laxatives, then there are lubricants, etc., etc. The modern day uh, drugs giving. But then I looked into the Ayurveda and Ayurveda starts treating constipation right from without medicine. Other Vyachikitsa. I was amazed and I was really surprised. I studied more, dig up more into the book and I saw that Ayurveda describes Adravya Chikitsa, the first is Swedan, then Koshnajal, lukewarm water, drinking lukewarm water, regular basis, 
dissolves your constipation flatulence brings the whole gi tract to normal functioning and achieves a very good health of gi tract that was surprising the koshna jal is described as a laghu and one must practice if when i went in kerala i i realized that even in hotel if you ask for drinking water they offer you lukewarm water if you ask them cold water they don't give you cold water they give you tap water normal temperature water but absolutely no so fridge water ice cold water or cold drinks should be absolutely no no they are not advised in ayurveda and abhyanga abhyanga that is bahya abhyanga as well as abhyantar abhyanga snehapan that you must have snehapan in your diet you know in early 80s and 90s even the cardiologist said no ghratpan ghee nahi lena hai ghee se cholesterol badhta hai but now in 2020 even modern science cardiologists they are advising yes 5 gram of daily cow ghee is advisable you must take cow ghee and another thing fasting i'll be talking more about it in my next slide the fasting then of course the exercise which i said and yogasan friends i have named here few asan padmasan vajrasan shavasan gomukhasan etc but believe me there are n number of asan described in uh, uh, yoga uh, science of yoga where it relieves the constipation and then there are some ganesh kriya ashwini mudra mulbandha also which are the exercise of anal area and perianal muscle and they help you relieving the so all this are without medicine treatment of the constipation without medicine and then sharangdhar samhita describes other procedures that is pachan i i told you concept of arm so wherever there is arm nirmiti in the body which is a partially digested food which is not good for the human body which is harmful and at a times if such partially or incomplete digested food remains into the body it forms toxicity it forms toxins into body so you need to digest this and ayurveda specially charak samhita describes in detail what are the procedures for arm pachan and what are the drugs herbal drugs which help for arm pachan and one of the best medicine is lukewarm water and then if you have a a a a, a fecal matter which is impacted which is not pakwa then you have anuloman dravya haritaki draksha amalki these are the few examples of uh, uh, of uh, ayurvedic drugs which cause the passage of this stool as an anuloman and then there is a shrausan shrausan means the mal which is stuck with the intestine the modern medicine also describes that even on the uh, colon the food material eaten several months back is found adherent with the wall or mucosa of colon for quite a long time friends this is klishtmal so if you want to remove this then shrausan dravya they help then as i said earlier stony hard stool if you want to do bhedan of this uh, stool then bhedan dravya are available they are mal bhedan and then the uh, the the dravya which liquefy the mal they are the rechan dravya described in uh, uh, sharangdhar samhita beautifully described in one seven, seven, one simple table that these are the examples of deepan dravya pachan dravya anuloman dravya samsan dravya rechak dravya bhedak dravya and lastly as i said the best is lukewarm water so this was a amazing knowledge i acquired i i started maturing for practice of ayurveda and for practice of proctology and when i was Uh, as i said i i was teaching to my student and especially post graduate student when we started digging up in the samhitas for their thesis topics so this was the amazing journey of my proctology practice which was very good and as i earlier said the fasting is one thing which is advocated in every ayurvedic samhita granth and in uh, 2014 i believe i don't remember the exactly year when the japanese biologist yoshinori osumi successfully proved that effect of the fasting is very good on destruction of cancerous and precancerous cells and he named it as autophagy yeah in 2016 and he was awarded nobel prize for demonstrating the effect of the fasting on precancerous cell but friend this was described 
but why he was awarded uh, nobel prize because he proved science of fasting into the language the world understands so we need to adapt the procedures and protocols of modern day scientific research and prove to the world what is already described in our own samhita that we are aware of importance of the fasting that's why i said fasting about fasting i'll tell you later on and look at the friend this is a very simple fistula anterior fistula this is a fistula with multiple opening and external this is what we can label as a water can perineum this is a fistula in female patient why i'm showing you this fistula is the treatment of the fistula was revolutionized in 1960 by legendary surgeon in banaras hindu university respected and honorable professor dr p j deshpande he reinvented uh, the kshar sutra which was already described in our ayur samhita granth and it made treatment of such complex fistula treatment a very easy uh you'll we'll be talking about palpating the anal and perianal region and its importance later on but first let me bow my head to my guru and legendary ayurveda surgeon dr s i nagral who was a professor of surgery shalya tantra at podar medical college and dr rajesh kumar gupta who was his senior resident and i was his junior resident but this photograph is of much later age when my uh, legendary guru was awarded dhanvantari award by our lok sabha speaker that time he was felicitated at pune and on the way this photograph was taken dr rajesh kumar gupta i consider as my junior guru and he too is a guru i worked under him as a junior resident and dr rajesh was my senior resident but another legendary person from banaras hindu university professor dr pj deshpande who reinvented shar sutra and who revolutionized the treatment of fistula in anu of such complicated uh, fistula with the treatment of the kshar sutra and after 1960 and i think earlier 1968 the first thesis in bhu came out with professor Doc, uh, dr kavi ratna sharma uh, with pg thesis of treatment of kshar sutra and later on the phd thesis also came in bhu about the treatment of the kshar sutra uh, treatment of the bhagandar or fistula in anu with the kshar sutra and with great success of treatment of bhagandar or fistula in anu and complex fistula also with treatment of a multicentric trial across the india with all india institute of medical sciences pgi chandigarh km hospital in mumbai km hospital was uh, almost uh, monitored this trial was monitored by dr nagral sir uh, and i had a, I, i am lucky because professor pj deshpande and nagral sir were friends and whenever professor pj deshpande used to visit mumbai he used to visit nagrar sir and one such occasion i had a fortune of uh, having darshan of this legendary surgeon professor pj deshpande sir so it made treatment of such complex fistula where you can see it was extended up to the knee joint the, even the photograph could not cover so the window technique which another student of dr pj deshpande sir professor dr sahu he established one more method of a window technique where you have to intervene the fistula line and and we create a window here and do the kshar sutra and treat the fistula line anu so uh, the whole track dries down once you tie the kshar sutra here in this area let me see yes the video plays and see how the uh, kshar sutra is done only for this brief uh, uh, part of the uh, fistula that is the window technique uh, practiced by see the small track by creating a window the kshar sutra is tied and every week the new kshar sutra is entered with rail road technique so we treated this complex fistula which otherwise would have been a very difficult and very lengthy procedure to operate such kind of fistula so here in this patient the kshar sutra change was done with rail road technique and treating such a complex fistula you have to tie the new kshar sutra to the old kshar sutra distal to the previous knot 
allow the knot to go inside the anus and proximal to this knot with some distance keeping catch it with artery forceps and cut the kshar sutra and pull the old kshar sutra out inserting the new kshar sutra this is the rail road well established technique these all kshar sutra and this technique was established in bhu with professor p j deshpande sir this whole procedure is done changing of the kshar sutra without anesthesia and you can see the new kshar sutra inserted and patient did not move at all which shows that it was a painless changing of the kshar sutra where you tie the new kshar sutra to uh, this fistula and uh, one or two more application and this fistula track was cut creating a window technique and the distal part of the whole lengthy track dried up you can see the hum uh, here the humble noise government institute creates in the background this photograph i am showing purposely uh, because uh, the kshar karma in by ayurveda surgeon or ayurveda practitioner is very common but there are some quacks who are also practicing proctology and they are applying strong alkali treating the internal hemorrhoid friends we do not do kshar karma on internal hemorrhoid at podar institute but we get lot of such complicated patient treated treated by quacks so here the strong alkali was applied to the internal uh, i don't know whether it was hemorrhoid or something else but the patient came with a proctitis and inflammation of the internal mucosa we had to admit this patient i have purposely included this photograph to show that how we matured in proctology practice over the years and working in government institute gives a different kind of experience altogether so now presently after 35 years of my practice the proctology has emerged as a super specialty not only that there are several organizations of proctologist come up national and on international fora and they are organizing huge and successful 1 2 3 4 days of conferences cmes and program not only that they are conducting super specialty fellowship programs and there are fellowship uh, courses are there and surprisingly dear friends these courses are also propagating and including the cadaveric dissection in this which sushrut described as a yogya vidhi for training such even for training in proctology and fellowship courses are propagating use of simulation lab in training of the proctology and another progress has taken up is there are disease spe specific proctologists very few but they have come like i said in 1980s there were very few proctologists in ayurveda as well as modern coming up but now there are disease specific proctologists one of my friend practicing proctology he treats only fistula no any other proctology condition hemorrhoid fissure he says dusre doctor ke paas jao come to me only with fistula all the complicated you know long transphenteric complicated fistula he is tre treating and that's why he has become proctologist treating only fistula so this is spe specific proctologists have emerged up and they have come up the investigation in proctology has come up like anything with the modern advancement of the technology so there is a rectal manometry to record the pressure of rectum defecography a real time defecography in order to treat because the 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 the, the new disease emerged in practice of proctology where patients suffering from chronic uh, constipation there was a obstructive defecation syndrome ods so in order to establish the cause behind the uh, ods there is a procedure called as a defecography uh, real time defecography they shoot the defec uh, defecating procedures along with the uh, uh, the radio opaque material and the defecography is recorded nerve latency test in order to check the nervous stimulation and sensation and etc uh, as being done and the sonography has also undergone the transformation in proctology practice over the year you know in 1985 
the sonography was new and it used to be considered luxury that abdominal sonography then it has become the trans endo anal sonography in order to diagnose the internal abscess the cavities deep seated cavities etc are beautifully illustrated with trans endo anal sonography i had a fortune of attending as a faculty the cairo international conference on proctology and uh, the the stapler janak or uh, who invented the stapler proctology antonio longo uh, we had a fortune of dr ali shafiq uh, professor of proctology at cairo university and his brother uh, and dr mahesh sangvi from india dr alok gupta was with me in this cairo conference i had a fortune of uh, meeting and uh, having dinner and assisting dr antonio longo in this conference and this one uh, photograph i always show uh, that is imperforate anus in newborn child very rare one in 10000 uh, bachchus they develop with imperforated anus and i when i was transferred in one of the rural area usmanabad government ayurveda college there i came across this child who was born with imperforate anus so i show Uh, in every of my presentation this thing i show this slide with professor dr kenji tazawa from japan uh, when i attended uh, in 2008 uh, the london international conference i was invited as a faculty in that and when i finished my presentation uh, a young japanese lady came to me and said uh, my boss wants to see you the boss was professor dr kenji tazawa a uh, lot of people they know him because dr professor kenji tazawa also visited jamnagar ayurveda university in his heyday and he said that i am shar sutra expert from japan so i was taken aback that a shar sutra expert from the japan and we call ourselves shar sutra expert in india so that was a shock for me who was a budding and emerging practicing ayurveda proctologist and then professor kenji tazawa said look the day is not far away that you will have to buy shar sutra from japan so that was a eye opener for me uh, learning about that so friends that is my that is my journey of clinical proctology practice right from 1995 to 2023 that how the proctology evolved in india and internationally also and how it dawned on me also having i am really thankful to dr amar prakash divedi dr rashmi ji and dr pranya sabre for inviting me on this forum and it was really honor uh, that in audience professor dr pk prajapati honorable vice chancellor of jodhpur ayurveda university is in audience and rest of the audience are also who have given a patient hearing to me thank you thank you very much thank you so much sir for uh, your valuable insights and it was really a great feast of knowledge for all of us uh, now i would like to request our honorable chief guest today uh, dr prajapati sir to please uh, say a few words for all the participants please sir जो दो सो मेनी थिंग्स एक्सप्लेन बाय डॉक्टर सोलंकी सर आई रिमेम्बर माय ओल्डन डेज फ्रॉम द बी एच यू वेन ही टॉक्स अबाउट द पी जी डेज पांडे एंड अदर respected our honorable leader of the ayurveda so i think that it should be a great pleasure for me to share the platform with you because the cellular department of all the uh, 
the major renowned institutes is uh, play major role in the treatment and uh, especially in hospital ipd maintenance so i thank you and dr solanki has explained uh, the importance of proctology clinical practices and uh, about some about char sutra which is included in the lavend valley nowadays so it is the play, uh, our proud that the incorporation of the char sutra in the lavend valley as a treatment of the piles and fistula so we have the exposure to check so many things and we witnessed in the critical situations dr vyas de monta is also joined here dr egoes is in aia and uh, rasmi is also doing very good job so i think uh, it's a great pleasure for us to in uh, uh, to share this some views on the sale sambhasha par because it is a very important one for the new comers of our field is without which cannot be practiced in as a such initially i have also practiced some ayurvedic surgery in uh, um, clinic uh, for the clinical exposure in nursing home in hospitals but um, क्या कहें कि हम सर्जरी के लिए बने नहीं थे इसलिए सर्जरी से डर लगता था भाग जाते थे लेकिन कभी भी जो जो चीजें सर्जरी में मिल सकती हैं वो कहीं और नहीं मिल सकती ये बिल्कुल फैक्ट बात है और शल्य संज्ञारण आज ही किसी ने हम बी एच यू पे एक जैक्सन लेक्चर दे रहे थे तो उसने एक क्वेश्चन उठा आयुर्वेदिक सर्जरी भी हमने कहा आयुर्वेदिक सर्जरी ही है केवल टेक्नोलॉजी इन्वॉल्व है इसकी वजह से सर्जरी आपको सर्जरी दिखती है लेकिन हुई तो फॉर्दर ऑफ सर्जरी तो जब ये बातें होती हैं तो हम लोगों को बहुत अच्छा लगता है और काफी कुछ सभी लोगों ने सल्य संभाषा के तरफ से आज चौथा वो वेबिनार ये किया जा रहा है इसके लिए हम आप सभी लोगों को बहुत बहुत बधाई देते हैं और इसी तरीके से इन संभाषा को कंटिन्यू रखिए क्योंकि यही एक कन्वोकेशन कन्वोकेशन का मीडिया एक तरह से कहें कि हम जो दूसरों को समझा सकते हैं कह सकते हैं बता सकते हैं उसका एक माध्यम है हम लोगों को आपस में डिस्कस करना ही चाहिए वेबिनार्स आजकल बहुत चूंकि अपने लिए अच्छे हो गए हैं पहले के सेमिनार में फिजिकली प्रेजेंट होना और चीजों को अपने से अलग हट के समय देना बड़ा मुश्किल काम हो जाता था इसलिए इस समय ये जो सुविधा हमको मिल गई इसका पूरा पूरा फायदा उठाते हुए हम लोगों को आपस में कन्वर्सेशन करने चाहिए इन चीजों को ध्यान में रखते हुए बहुत सारे लेटेस्ट डेवलपमेंट लोगों को समझाने के लिए बहुत अच्छा जम है इसलिए हम आप सभी लोगों को बधाई देते हैं इस प्लेटफॉर्म से कि आप सभी लोगों ने इस तरह का एक बहुत अच्छा वेबिनार ऑर्गेनाइज किया वेल टाइम आज हमको थोड़ी सी प्रॉब्लम हुई मिसमैनेजमेंट ऑफ टाइम का हुआ क्योंकि हम फंस गए कहीं ट्रैफिक में इस वजह से थोड़ा सा दिक्कत हुई है लेकिन ठीक है ऑनलाइन हमने पूरा लेक्चर सुना है सोलंकी सर बहुत बहुत बधाई हो आपको और बहुत बढ़िया बोला आपने आज क्योंकि मिले तो हम आपको शायद आर्य पोदार में हैं क्योंकि हम विजिट के समय आए थे तब आपसे बातें हुई थी हमारी और हमने आपका डिपार्टमेंट भी देखा था बहुत प्राउड मूवमेंट था हमारे लिए वो सर्जरी डिपार्टमेंट में आर्य पोदार में बहुत अच्छा काम हो रहा था उस समय हम बोल के भी आए थे शायद इस बात को तो थैंक यू आप बहुत सीनियर है हमारे क्योंकि जिस समय आपने यूजी की उस समय हम शायद यूजी ज्वाइन ही किए थे तो थैंक यू सर थैंक यू और आप सभी लोगों को थैंक यू क्योंकि बहुत अच्छे से कन्वेंट किया है आपने इसके लिए योगेश जी को रश्मि जी को और प्रज्ञा जी को भी बहुत बहुत बधाई आपने बहुत अच्छे स्कॉलर्स दिए इसके लिए भी सर आपका बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद आशा करते हैं कि इस तरह का ऐसे ही मेंटेन रहेगा और इसको हम कंटिन्यू करते रहेंगे सो थैंक यू थैंक यू टू ऑल ऑफ यू थैंक यू प्रजापति सर थैंक यू वेरी मच फॉर गिविंग यू एंड काइंड वर्ड्स टू अस एंड डॉक्टर पद्य आई एम टेकिंग 1 मिनट इरोनियसली आई फॉरगॉट टू मेंशन एंड थैंक डॉक्टर योगेश बड़वे ही प्लेड अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट रोल ही हैज पर्सनली कॉल्ड मी फॉर अरेंजिंग दिस लेक्चर सो आई एम फ्रॉम बॉटम ऑफ माय हार्ट I am thankful to Dr. Yogesh Barve, Professor and Head of Department at IIA, New Delhi. Thank you.
थैंक यू सर थैंक यू सो मच रिस्पेक्टेड डॉक्टर प्रजापति सर for your valuable words and knowledge which will surely help us to glorify in our field and thank you solanki sir for your uh, great knowledge uh, that you shared today with all of us uh, now i will request any participants if uh, anyone has uh, any query or if anyone wants to uh, ask any questions regarding the today's topic so you are welcome how school hoga एनी क्वेश्चन एनी क्वेरीज साउथ लाइन में जाए हाँ हाँ छोड़ के वापस आ रहा है आई थिंक देर आर नो क्वेरीज हेलो यस गुड गुड इवनिंग मैम माई सेल्फ डॉक्टर अभिनव हेलो एम आई ऑडेबल मैम यस सर यस सर यस सर प्लीज आस Ma'am, I just want to ask Dr. Yunus Solanki, sir. Uh, sir, uh, what kind of uh, painkillers we should give uh, in patients of anorectal conditions? And if a patient is complaining of severe itching, so is there any uh, medicine that you use personally, or you have any idea about that, which uh, which will be very much beneficial in patients of having pain and itching in the anal region, particularly? Thank you, sir. yeah when uh, first we will talk about the pain in anorectal region uh, in order to treat a pain in anorectal region you need to evaluate the origin of the pain the cause of the pain if the pain is because of the fulminating abscess then no ordinary painkiller will help you need to give strong nsaid non steroidal anti inflammatory drug straight away in my experience for treating such severe uh, throbbing pain of fulminating abscess that is what we call apakva vidradi the jaloka charan relieves up to some extent but otherwise we have to use the non steroidal anti inflammatory drug of choice that is one thing if there is a milder pain if the pain fissure pain because of the sphincter spasm then no amount of any painkiller will relieve the patient of pain but the best way to relieve such kind of pain is lukewarm seeds bath avgah svedan jo ayurved mein bataya gaya hai you ask the patient to take lukewarm seeds bath and patient will tell you that immediately he get instantly pain relief because of that and the patient on his own repeatedly seeds you advise them do teen bar baithna hai wo bolega 6 bar baithta hu aur bahut acha lagta hai so lukewarm seeds bath relieves the pain of a fissure spasm so likewise you have to find out the cause of the anorectal pain and treat accordingly that is one even you talked about the itching around and again you will have to evaluate what is the cause of itching the commonest cause of itching is unkempt hygiene if the patient is not cleaning anal area very well and dried fecal matter is found around the anal region the patient will constantly feel itching around the anal region that is the commonest cause another commonest cause for itching is worms because of the worms also patient feels itching around the anal region and then there are n number of skin conditions right from scabies to uh, the lichen planus and other infective uh, conditions which can cause itching so have a good history give a good clinical examination with better illumination acha light source ke under perianal area examining karna chahiye aur skin disease ka evaluation karna chahiye agar proctologist se skin disease evaluation nahi ho raha hai refer the patient to dermatologist or skin specialist to evaluate the skin condition and treat him but otherwise these are the commonest uh, uh, itching problems in the practice of proctology some kind of google culp also including trifala google helps in treating the pain in and around the anal region but otherwise you will have to evaluate and treat according dr amar okay, thank you ji can you shed some lights on this issue sir we have perfectly uh, given the answer uh, of the this participant dr rabinow uh, i would only say that uh, if you are uh, i mean your question is only limited to sharasutra and the pain after sharasutra then uh, you you need to you know uh, check if the uh, tying is done quite uh, uh, usko tight. kya bolte hain ki if it it has been tight or not wo aapko dekhna hai and then if it is due to i mean if it is only limited to sharasutra treatment and pain then sits baths resolve the pain and uh, 
for eating fungal infection as sir has rightly said it is the most common thing and then there are certain ayurvedic preparations like nimba tel you can uh, apply over that area and then arogya vardhini can be given vidanga arista can be given so these are the drugs which can be given but as sir has rightly said you need to evaluate what is the cause if it is due to fungal infection then you need to give a fung anti fungal treatment so that is how you you can manage those complications Uh, sir, I have evaluated the patient. He was suffering from fistula and uh, a bit of a fissure in ano, posterior fissure in ano. So I put him on NSAIDs for at least seven to ten days. On taking that medicines and few antibiotics, he was uh, sir responding well. But when I stopped the medicines, then he again start and complaining of pain. I advised him sits bath for five to six minutes per day, two to three times. I I gave him trifla guglu, but there was no response. I gave him a good laxative so that the stool may uh, pass out easily. But he was having no response to all. Finally, I gave him the smooth ganvati, sir. But still, he was complaining of pain. So I got you know, sir, disappointed that what should I give? And he was avoiding the painkillers because he has taken for a long time. And he came. He visited my OPD uh, on third. I was the third doctor. Doctor who was treating his fistula and a bit of pain in the anal region. So I was very much confused on my private practice that what should I give him? Yeah, what should I prescribe him so that he may get benefited with Ayurveda medicines? That's why I asked the question, sir. Thank you. Barabar, sir. I was also thinking about that. You are mainly mainly talking about that Shara Sutra and the post-operative pain. So, see, you have to know the anatomy. So, you know that if it is low anal fistula, in such cases, maybe, sometimes. अगर आपने उस चार सूत्रों को टाइट बांध दिया है तो उसके वजह से भी होता है पेन तो इन सच केस आई वुड से कि एक रेस्क्यू बोल के आप उसको क्या कर सकते हैं कि पूरी कोटिंग चार सूत्र की निकाल दीजिए और सिर्फ उस थ्रेड को कुछ दिन तक रखिए दो तीन दिन तक लेट द इन्फ्लेमेशन गेट सेटल डाउन एंड देन देर आफ्टर अकेन यू कैन रिप्लेस विद दी शार सूत्र कभी कभी शार सूत्र के प्रिपरेशन में अगर शार का प्रमाण ज्यादा हो गया है तो उसके वजह से भी पेशेंट को बहुत ज्यादा बर्निंग और पेन होता है तो ये बहुत सारी चीजें हैं बट आपने जैसे कहा कि प्रैक्टिकल प्रैक्टिस में काफी चीजें ऐसे होती है कि हमको एग्जैक्ट कॉपी बुक कुछ नहीं मिलता है और हमको अपने एक्सपीरियंस के हिसाब से उसको मैनेज करना पड़ता है सर डॉक्टर पांडे आई वुड पर्टिकुलरली इस पेशेंट के बारे में आपने अभी डिटेल में कहा ना तो आई वुड एडवाइज वन मोर थिंग ट्राई मात्रा बस्ती टू दिस पेशेंट अलॉन्ग विधन सर पार्टन बट आई है Yeah, you you good, good few uh, five or seven days of uh, matra basti number one, and give a mild point two five milligram of alprazolam at night time, uh, not causing him uh, sleeping, but just uh, relaxing his sphincters. Uh, these these drugs like diazepam, alprazolam, this will give him a relaxation and peace of mind also. And because of any nervous kind of a stimulation, if he is getting pain. Then he will be relieved with this. So, ये एक try करके देखिए. Okay, sir. Thank right, you, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Any other questions or queries? Okay. Now I will uh, request Dr. Amar Bivedi, sir, to please uh, conclude the session. Ah, uh, thank you, Dr. Pradnya. Ah. Uh, first of all i would like to thank uh, our uh, guest speaker uh, solanki sir hamare uh, guru hai hum sabhi logon ke podar mein and uh, you have you know shared your journey of uh, clinical practice in your proctology or uh, uh, so certain things in your uh, presentation was very new to me that i first time saw that uh, advanced uh, patient examination table i have never seen that to be frank so i say bahut sare advances hai proctology mein and uh, you have also said uh, about the that book romance of proctology mm -hmm. and and you have concluded with this sochanand as it has been uh, named ki jo relief aapko constipation ठीक होने के बाद होता है दैट सॉर्ट ऑफ थिंग इसी से रिलेटेड एक चीज याद आ रही थी व्हेन आई वाज रीडिंग फॉर माय लेक्चर ऑन पाइल्स डे तो मुझे सर पता चला कि uh, 
ये पाइल्स वर्ड का पहला यूज ये इसराइल फिलिस्तीन से रिलेटेड है अगर आपने देखा होगा तो इट वॉज मैंशन इन बाइबल और ऐसा लिखा है उसमें कि इसराइल वाले बोलते थे कि तुमको पाइल्स हो जाएगा दे वर करसिंग दी फेलिस्टीन ऐसा एक रेफरेंस है और फिलिस्टीन वाले उसके रिप्लाई में क्या करते थे कि आपको पाइल्स के साथ में इचिंग भी होगा सो दैट वॉज सॉर्ट ऑफ रेफरेंस आई सॉ इन वाइल सर्चिंग फॉर दी एंशियन हिस्ट्री ऑफ एमरॉइड एंड ऑल सो प्रोक्टोलॉजी ओवरऑल इज अ वंडरफुल ब्रांच डेवलप एंड स्पेशली दी आयुर्वेदिक सर्जन के लिए तो इट इज ब्रेड एंड बटर और डेफिनेटली वी कैन गिव बेटर आउटकम the ayurvedic surgeons in the proctology conditions aapne jaise bataya ki constipation ke bare mein they have got limited knowledge and limited management also but in ayurveda uh, they have given multifold treatment right from deepan pachan aniloman sansran vedan what a wonderful categorized and you can say the tailor made treatment uh, in ayurveda we get for constipation like condition or uh, इसके साथ में यू हैव ऑल्सो शेयर्ड अबाउट द रीसेंट सिमुलेशन लैब्स कमिंग आउट फॉर द स्किल डेवलपमेंट इन द प्रोक्टोलॉजी प्रैक्टिस दैट इज आल्सो वेरी गुड थिंग एंड यू हैव ऑल्सो शेयर्ड अबाउट दोज यू आर मीटिंग विद द इंटरनेशनल फ्रेटर्निटी हु आर वर्किंग इन टू प्रोक्टोलॉजी एंड वो लोग आज प्रोक्टोलॉजी को प्रमोट कर रहे हैं और ऐसा दिन ना आ जाए कि हमको चार सूत्र इम्पोर्ट करना पड़े बाहर से सो दैट इज द स्कोप फॉर आयुर्वेदिक प्रोक्टोलॉजी प्रैक्टिस आपने इफनेक इफटेक टेक्निक के बारे में बताया विच इज डेवलप्ड बाय मनोरंजन साहू सर एंड ऑल सो डेफिनेटली चार सूत्र ट्रीटमेंट इन फिस्टुला इज यू नो दून फॉर आर आयुर्वेदिक सर्जन और इसके लिए डेफिनेटली वी ऑल आर वेरी थैंकफुल टू बी एच यू टीम फॉर स्टैंडर्डाइजिंग दिस चार सूत्र इन प्रोक्टोलॉजी प्रैक्टिस पर्टेनिंग टू फिस्टुला एन एनो बहुत सारी चीजें इसमें हैं जो uh, हम डिस्कस कर सकते हैं बट टूडे वी डोंट हैव दैट टाइम वी आर एक्सीडिंग इट सो वंस अगेन सर थैंक यू वेरी मच फॉर दिस वंडरफुल फीस्ट ऑफ नॉलेज आपका जो 30 साल का अनुभव है वो आपने कोशिश किया कि आप किस तरह से जो उसका हाईलाइट है यू हैव शेयर्ड विद अस एंड वंस अगेन थैंक यू सर फॉर गिविंग दिस लेक्चर और इन फ्यूचर वी विल अगेन ट्राइंग टू गेट यू फॉर सम अदर टॉपिक और uh, इसके साथ आई विल रिक्वेस्ट रश्मि मैम अदर टीम टू कंक्लूड दिस सेशन थैंक यू डॉक्टर थैंक यू thank you sir thank you sir thank you everyone uh, for being part of this uh, knowledge treat uh, we will be arranging this knowledge treat uh, at every month's 12th date 12th so uh, we will be sharing uh, the next month's plan soon uh, that's all from our side yes thank you Hello. dr rashmi Uh, thank you dr rashmi and uh, uh, on behalf of uh, our team and vishwa ayurved parishad i would like to express our sincere gratitude to our today's chief guest honorable respected professor uh, dr p k prajapati sir vice chancellor jodhpur ayurveda university for taking his valuable time and being present here for whole lecture in spite of he was traveling एंड पूरा लेक्चर उन्होंने सुना उसके बाद में ही टोल्ड मी दैट ही विल गिव द रिमार्क्स एंड ही स्टेड देयर एंड गिव हिज रिमार्क्स सो थैंक यू सो मच सर फॉर योर वैल्यूएबल प्रेजेंस एंड आई वुड लाइक टू एक्सटेंड अवर हार्टफेल थैंक्स टू अवर एस्टीम्ड गेस्ट स्पीकर एंड हु इज माय गुरु डॉक्टर यूनुस सोलंकी सर फॉर हिज वंडरफुल वर्ड्स एंड नॉलेज दैट ही शेयर विथ ऑल ऑफ अस एंड he shared his valuable insights and expertise also and which will be surely benefited uh, be benefiting for all of us thank you so much sir for uh, sharing the knowledge uh, then i am also thankful to our core team members uh, dr amrit vivedi sir dr yogesh badwe sir dr pankaj barman sir dr mahesh vyas sir Uh, dr dattatrey rao sir uh, dr amit paliwal sir dr rashmi 
for executing the whole uh, meeting and the lecture and the whole program very smoothly and uh, i am also thankful to uh, all executive committee members of vishwayurved parishad uh, national level for motivating us and for forgiving our mistakes uh, all the time and uh, being instrumental in making all the events a success so thank you lastly to all the participants for patience uh, patient hearing and uh, thank you once and one and all once again and have a nice day uh, good night to all of you thank you so much good night this i conclude that today's session is over we'll end, end with you. the shanti mantra om sarve to supna sant Thank you. Good night.